Hello everybody and welcome back to SCM 2021 Speed Souls Charity Marathon. We are here today with MASH and we are running Streets of Rage. It does say Blaze Easy, but that may not be the case. Uh, we're waiting on donations now. Let's see if anybody can try to eke out a victory. Uh, and so let me pass it over to MASH who will introduce himself and the run. Take it away. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Mash. Uh, I've been speedrunning Streets of Rage 1 for a while now. Uh, I first picked this up and learned it a few years back uh, from someone in the community known as uh, Cespant, uh, who's taught me quite a bit about the run, and several other people have jumped in and uh, assisted myself with uh, picking up and learning this game. Is The fact that it's on easy doesn't mean it's easy, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Uh, the AI has very specific ways of reacting to player movement. Um, we'll see that as we go through the run. It's a short run. It's roughly 30 minutes now for me. It used to be 40 plus minutes. Uh, I've practiced with all three characters. I'm trying my best to get into the top 10 overall. Um, I'm a fairly good Adam and Axel player. Blaze is super competitive, so I'm a bit further down the list on those ones. But... Uh, It'll be a nice, enjoyable run overall, and uh, so let's get the confirmation on the character. Alrighty, uh, we have a $5 donation that will steal the game. That is $5 from McGroove94, says, Blaze for days, baby. Keep up the good work, guys. <laughs> so it uh, looks like Blaze is going to be the winner of yeah. our Streets of Rage character selection set. Yeah, so on this screen, this is the character select screen. You can see here there's a rating on all the characters. Um, as you can see, Adam is the slowest. It says B for speed, but um, he, he feels like C tier, if anything. Um, Blaze is good for everything except for really damage. Um, we'll see some abuse with uh, some strats and stuff we'll be doing. Um, I like to call it the wiggle strat. You can do it with all the characters. But I'll explain it as we get going. But anyways, ready on the timer? And uh, so we'll start this run in three, two, one, go. All right, so there's, thank you. Um, so there's eight stages, um, they're called rounds. Um, essentially each stage is broken up. Uh, there's a boss at the end of each stage and we want to do our best to clear the screens and move them as far as possible to get all of the enemies to spawn. And a lot of the enemies, when they first come on screen, they'll do very specific things, but after they get on screen, they could just do whatever the hell they want. And a lot of the time, they want to attack you from behind, so... If we're turning away from them, they'll be a lot more aggressive. So moving into this screen, we're going to summon all of the enemies from the side of the screen so that we can just keep pushing on. The fastest way to clear screens is by getting them all grouped up, but it makes the screen a lot more chaotic to deal with sometimes. But you want to keep scrolling the screen as fast as possible because essentially not all the enemies will spawn until you're on the last part of the screen when it stops scrolling. and it won't spawn all the enemies if there's too many on screen. So we want to optimize killing as many of the enemies as fast as possible. So that guy just came up and punched me. I know you didn't see the punch. But he did do that. Um, all the enemies early on will have set amount of HP values. They'll grow over time as we go through the stages with recolors. So depending on the color of the enemy, they'll have different amounts of HP, and depending on the attacks we do, they all do sets amounts of damage. And we don't want to be getting hit too many times by the ladies there with the whips, because they have a wider hitbox range. So the best way to avoid getting hit by them, unfortunately the screen is a little chaotic right now, is to... Try to group them up and then hit them and stun them. Um, so we're at the first boss already. You won't really see him come on the screen. But we're going to kill him really quickly. Uh, using a series of grab and re-grabs. 
And that allows us to kill the boss relatively easily. So that's stage one done already. Um, as we progress on, like I said, the game's gonna get harder and harder. Uh, we'll get introduced to new bosses, and uh, then the finale stage will have everything kind of go up together. Uh, so we'll see all of the bosses come back. So what I'm trying to do is trying to get the enemies to play nice with me so that I can try to effectively clear the screen as quickly as possible. So the weapon I have in my hand is the knife. And it's probably one of the best weapons in the game because it deals two damage straight up to every enemy it hits. And it kills most enemies in one or two hits. Sometimes more later, but... We want to try to keep the knife as long as possible. And you can throw it, and that happens if they're on, like, a, a different uh, horizontal plane from you. Um, the other weird thing the knife can do, if your enemies are too close, it won't actually connect with them. And like I said, some of those enemies are very aggressive, and when they come on screen, they'll do exactly what I expect them to do until they reach me. So we're just gonna keep moving through the stage as quickly as possible. If we get hit, um, and there's more than one enemy, like, there's a good possibility that they will just keep hits on me. So I want to make sure that that doesn't happen, because you can just watch my health bar get deleted. And we'll see that a lot with the, uh, the, uh, belt, uh, the ninja-looking guys. So this guy is, like, a Freddy Krueger guy. He's one of the faster characters to deal with, because you have to grab and re-grab him much quicker than all the other characters. Um, that didn't go too bad. Unfortunately, I got hit because I didn't grab and re-grab quickly enough, but not bad for Siege 2. So already on stage 3, like I said, the fun's going by real quick. Um, so in stage 3, we're on the beach. Um, we'll start getting introduced to next tiers of enemies. So the geishas there are now in green instead of blue. And uh, we'll see some different enemy compositions. Um, so the one thing to point out that if a enemy has a weapon, they get upgraded to the next tier. So if an enemy takes three hits and they have a weapon, they'll take like at least a one or two additional hits, depending on the tier that they are. So the wiggle strat, you've already been seeing me do it a little bit, is essentially I'm flipping my character left and right as fast as possible while I'm hitting the attack button. And that allows me to quickly move my hitbox around the character to kind of like keep hitting enemies. Now unfortunately I should have a knife here, but I lost it. So we'll just quickly use the wiggle strat here to kind of lock up the enemies and deal with them as quickly as we can. So that guy can throw you, but you can recover the landing instead of taking damage as long as you hit the jump button just before you hit the, the ground. So we have like one more screen to deal with and then we'll be at the boss of this stage as well. So when All you right. do that wiggle strat, when you move left and right like that, does each time you register back like from left to right, does each time register as a new hit? So does... Essentially, yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. So this guy's a little annoying because you have to dance with him, and then essentially it's a wiggle strat, but you do it a little bit slower, and that allows you to move him around you. 
Because he always goes to the opposite side of you after you let go of him. So while that fight was clean, it wasn't fast, but it was a lot safer to do it that way. Um, dealing with an enemy while you're trying to juggle or deal with a boss uh, does make things a bit more chaotic. We'll see that at, like towards the end of the run for sure and some other stages. So this stage is chaotic because a lot of the enemies are higher tiers. There's a lot more enemies on screen in general. Um, I think this is the one of the more scarier stages in the game uh, this early, just because of the sheer amount of enemies. And the fact that there's so many enemies and a lot of the whip ladies there are very annoying to deal with because, again, them having a wide hitbox means they can hit me on horizontal planes above or below them pretty easily. So we're just going to keep progressing through the stage. Like, a lot of the stages aren't really long except for... I don't know, the stage after this one is a bit lengthier, and then stage 7 is only long because it's an auto-scroller. Um, taking it up there is fine. Like, we have lots of lives, so it's not a big deal. When you die and you come back into the screen, you will uh, knock down all of the enemies on the screen. Like, they get knocked down. Um, that happens also when you do the cop special, which we won't be doing too often. We'll use it like once on this stage near the end. Um, there's a few other points where we'll use it as well, but essentially that's really slow, so we just don't bother with it. Especially on stage 7, it's the slowest. Alright, so one of the things we don't want to have happen is these guys throwing us back and forth between them. Um, wiggle strat is nice, but if they decide to slide, then that could be annoying. And since they're all not grouped up, it makes it a lot more difficult to, to deal with them. And they can just grab me whenever they want. So anyways, um, those guys are done. Knife guy will come on screen. We'll deal with him. And now we're going to the last screen just before the boss, which has a lot of enemies on it. I wanted to kill that one enemy there so I can get everybody to spawn on screen. We're going to call the cop here just to make the screen a little bit faster. So there's going to be a few more enemies that all spawn here on the left. Now, unfortunately, that knife's a little out of boundaries, so we're going to have a little bit of a problem with the one geisha that's going to come on the left side there. So I'm going to just wrap around. And that's going to force him to go to the right-hand side so that he's not facing me. And then that allows me to finish quickly killing the boss. Normally, I would throw the knife and then would send him flying and give me enough time to wrap up the boss instead of doing a wrap. Essentially, the game doesn't let you sit on the other side of the boss because you have to stay in the screen bound at all time. So it wraps you back in front of them. So that's a safer way to do the quick kills on the bosses instead of doing a grab and re-grab. So instead of like potentially losing the, uh, the, the chance for the grab again, like the stage two boss, for instance, you could just do a grab and a re-grab uh, by wrapping them. All right, so we're going to keep pushing this stage. This is one of the longer stages, and it has one of the more complicated boss fights. It's not necessarily hard, it's just the execution required for it is annoying because it's a double boss fight, which is the first of a few of them. So we want that baseball bat at the end of the screen because we needed to kill a bunch of whip ladies, and these ones 
couple of them just fall on the ground, so unfortunately I messed that up. We're just gonna keep pushing them. We get to this screen here. Because it'll just be a lot quicker to deal with them this way. So we're kind of recovering things here. Alright, we're good. Let's keep moving. So this stage has a mini boss, which is the stage two or three boss, which we'll see after we clear this upcoming screen. Um, as you can see, the enemies have some weapons. Uh, the guy with the pipe is annoying because he has bigger attack range, so we want to try to clear off the enemies as effectively as possible. We're going to position ourselves for the boss. But since there's no geisha, we can just dance with this boss really easily. That's it. Easy peasy. Alright, so we're going to cop special coming up. Um, we're going to scroll the entire screen past all of these guys if they're cooperative and don't keep getting in my way. I'm trying to get a couple jester clown looking guys to spawn, which are annoying to deal with. We'll clear the whole screen with a special. Um, really nice, easy way to deal with the screen. We'll pick up a new one here. Keep moving the screen. This will be the final screen before the boss is on this stage. I just got thrown there. I'm thrown again, and I wasn't even on the same plane as you can see there. Like, they can grab me from uh, a plane below or a, uh, above them. I'm waiting for the Jester guy to come on the screens before I special again. You could manually clear this screen, but I find it slightly easier and safer to just use the special here. Then there'll be two more guys come on the screen here. We deal with them pretty quickly. And we're going to set up here for hopefully what we consider to be the, the quick kill for this boss, which is up to do. Alright, so we grabbed the one twin, we grabbed the second twin, we got both locked up, and now we can just keep them in this loop as long as our timing's on point. So I grabbed too soon there, so that's a case of where the timing got messed up. We'll try to do a recovery. Of course, I got suplexed as well. So unfortunately, we didn't get the cleanest way of dealing with that, but... Fine. We'll have another chance to show off the complete version of it, but essentially if I grab we too soon by turning around, because of Blaze's movement speed, um, she can get into position on enemies and grab them really quickly, which is where we want to kind of slow down a bit with her. Um, characters like Adam, you have to go a bit, you have to go a bit sooner than trying to delay it, and Axel you pretty much don't have a problem with him because his speed makes it pretty easy to do. So this stage um, has two bosses at the end and a mini boss that we saw from, I believe, what was it, stage three? But now we start seeing even stronger enemy compositions. Um, this level is a bit lengthier. It also has some crushers in it, which we'll see. Crushers work on a weird uh, plane because they have like a... I don't even know how to describe the shape that, shape that it is, but because of the way that the screen is set up, um, they have a wider hitbox towards the bottom of the screen and a shorter one near the top. So slower characters like Adam unfortunately can't make it through the crusher without getting hit. The blaze can just walk through it even though it's coming down because she'll already have cleared the hitbox. So once we clear these enemies off the screen, we'll have a mini boss show up here. 
So if you remember the big guy before, we got him again. No enemy to worry about, so we can just eat on him. And then continue on the stage here. Like I said, I can just clear the crushers with Blaze's movement speed without much worry. Adam is the only one where you can't really do that with. Uh, Axel can still do it as well. But again, we're just making use of the wiggle strats here. And since the knife is really strong, we can clear most of these other enemies pretty easily just by hitting them. Okay, unfortunately, I got hit there. I want to keep moving the screen now. She'll come with us. So the enemies speed up when they're off screen as well. So to like get into position. So don't ever be afraid of like advancing the screen. Because the enemies will always try to catch up with you. It's just the way they're set up. Alright, so we'll have a red belt or orange belt. As you can see, he just almost deleted my health bar there because I missed get hitting him before he hit me. But we'll we'll be fine. I kinda wanna keep both pop specials that I picked up. Because you start with one and you get an initial one. I'll lose that if I die. So we're gonna make it to the boss screen and then we'll get a full heal and then we'll be okay to go from here. Okay, I was really looking for that knife. I almost didn't see it. Um, so now that we're on the right plane, we can deal with that guy. This guy's gonna come on screen, we're gonna hit him, bring him over to us so he's not playing around games with us. I don't need him jumping around, causing problems, so. Alright, and now we can move on to the double boss. So we'll do the grab strat on this one. Throw this one into that boss, call the cop special, it'll knock him into us. And then we can do the grab strats again and kill one of the bosses before we need to worry about the other one. Unfortunately, I got hit there, so... What I'll do is I'll cop special again, which is why we have that. That'll knock that down. We'll go to the top of the screen here and reset them to the bottom, and then just do the grab and re-grab strats, finish them all. All right, so we're already on stage seven. So this stage, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if I didn't, this is an auto-scroller stage. Uh, there's only time to lose on this stage. Um, there's nothing special about the stage, so if you have, like, anything you'd like to say, uh, uh, towards the marathon or whatever, we're just gonna be throwing some guys off the edge. Well, I see some love in the chat for the game. A lot of people saying that there's with some of their first games that they played. Uh, how did you get started with this game? Was it something you played as a kid and, uh, uh decided to just keep speeding with it uh, as you got older or did you find it late so i did play this when i was really young my dad got us a sega when i was a bit younger we played this game together uh co-op and uh, it was a lot of fun um i'll mention more about that experience with them afterwards uh, when we get to that point but uh, it was a great time i enjoyed playing this game a lot another game i played with the sega around the same time would have been altered beast which is not so friendly of a game to to try to play <laughs> But if you're familiar with that game, you know how difficult some of these Sega games could be. Absolutely. I have my um, own horror stories with Altered Beast. Yeah. As much as I loved Altered Beast, it was a very difficult game. Um, that was kind of the that was kind of the situation at, at my house where it was, no, you can't play this game, it's too violent. Here, have this one with this bear on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the transformation stuff in that game is pretty pretty unique, but yeah. 
Streets of Rage 1 and Altered Beast were some of the first ones I've ever played on the Sega. Um, pretty sure that was my first game console, to be honest. I didn't get a PlayStation or any of the other stuff until much, much later, so... I did play a lot of Sega games like this game back then, but I didn't start speedrunning it or replaying again until, like, a few years back now. Um, so the baseball bat we picked up, we're just gonna get rid of it. It's now deleted. It's no longer in... no longer here. We don't want it. But yeah, the stage, literally the fastest way to deal with the stage is throw everybody off the edge. Sometimes get yourself thrown off the edge, but... Uh, you don't want to use the special. Um, it's slower to try to fight the enemies normally, since they'll just die if you throw them off anyways. No risk, no reward. Yeah, and if you get them close to the edge too, you can also do a full combo and it'll knock them through the edge. So I'm lining myself up in a pretty particular spot because the way it works is when they come in from the left side of the screen or drop in, they will like gravitate towards this corner and it's safer for me to be up here because I can't really throw me off from this spot because it's already towards the end of the edge of the screen. And as I mentioned, if you're at the edge of the screen, it just wraps you back in. So we start seeing these stronger ninja looking dudes which are not so friendly we just dropped her through the floor unfortunately that knife guy kind of got in the way so you can see that guy just comes into the screen and he's gonna come right up to us then we can throw him off the edge and we're done so now the hardest stage of the game i'm sure many people have gotten to this stage when they were younger or played this game for the first time and probably couldn't clear it. Essentially, it's all the bosses we fought, one giant stage, lots of enemies, and a lot of things can go wrong, like that table hitting me in the face. So now we have to put everything we learned in the run all together. With mass amounts of enemies at the same time. So we have one more full screen to clear, and then we'll have the first uh, refight from the Sage 1 boss, and it goes in the order of the Sages as well. Unfortunately, I got hit by the table because I keep forgetting that these exist in this game, but that's fine. We're going to scroll the screen, deal with all of these enemies, hopefully without too much problems. What I'm hoping they don't do is sneak up on me and grab me like that, because there's not a whole lot I can do about that. So the bosses in this stage have a little bit more health than they did before. Uh, if you're playing in two-player mode, um, a lot of the bosses will have increased health, and the game will summon way more enemies on screen as well. Um, Cesspat, who is a really good runner of this game, in fact he holds multiple world records in this game, uh, has played this game on the hardest difficulty. Um, I have no idea how they managed to do it. They've done this game in co-op as well. Um, their co-op partners are really good at this game as well. And uh, it was really nice to be able to learn what I could from them. But again, sometimes this game just doesn't want to play nice, but it's not so much RNG. It's just the AI reacting to every single player input I give. And just knowing how to deal with that. Alright, so I messed up the regrab there, so we're just going to reset him and then doing that like i said i have to do i have to be fast and if i hit too many attack inputs um so after the the second knee attack that i do i'll automatically with blaze do a backflip 
which is not something you generally want to be doing. So you won't see me ever really finish a full combo, on purpose anyways. These guys keep trying to get really close to me to grab me, which is what I want to avoid happening. And then these guys, they love running away from you um, if you face them. So again, we try to show our back, hate them over. Alright, so in the instance where I let go of that guy is because I wasn't holding the other direction before I finished the attack. So the way that fight works is we want to finish the attack uh, while we're already holding the other direction so that we can automatically be set up to re-grab them right away. And these guys love flipping over you, so if you're really good at figuring that out, you can deal with them pretty easily. But if you let them line up kicks on you, you can watch them. We're going to pick up this for a backup since we accidentally let go of this guy. Because if we don't, he's just going to keep running around with fire and you can't grab him, obviously, if that happens. All right, so we're going to the last major screen. Uh, we're going to deal with these ladies right away because they're really, really annoying otherwise. Um, so yeah, like I said, these guys here, um, their single attack, the kick that they do, can actually hit me multiple times for each kick, especially if they stun lock me. You can just watch them delete my health bar like that just happened. Um, he connected one kick, but it counted for many, and that can happen like that. So, good example of why this game is not as easy. Alright, so now we have the twin refight, so we have another chance to show off the complete strat. Alright, I let go there, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that I can reset them up. Fortunately, she didn't line up right. There we go. I was a little slow in that reaction. Alright, we're not doing so hot right now. I really need them to line up on the, the up here. All right, we're finally through. Okay, so last boss of the game is Mr. X. Uh, he's a reoccurring character in the Streets of Rage series. Um, he's gonna ask us a question here. We have. One of two possible answers we can give. Uh, we're going to choose no because he wants us to be part of his syndicate. And obviously that would be a bad thing. We want to stop his syndicate. But now he's really upset. So he's going to summon some goons for us to kill. And then he's going to do a final showdown with us. But he's not going to play fair. He's going to summon more. And this boss fight, while... Well, Play is very similar to like the stage three boss fight. Um, not as easy to do because 
Mr. X does a lot of crazy stuff. Like, he has a gun. He has a crazy bunt attack that does a lot of damage. Essentially, he can remove a lot of your health bar really, really quickly. And he moves incredibly fast. Like, if there was a speedster, that's the speedster in this game. Unfortunately, that geisha wanted to play games with me. She's not playing nice at all. Alright, get it ready on time. Time is when the screen fades to black. And that's time. So unfortunately, it wasn't the best run that I've done. Um, I've done several PBs over the last couple weeks leading up to this, but uh, I'm sitting at a 29, so I'm looking to break a sub-29 and get into the top 10 now for Blaze. Um, so I'm happy overall that I've been PBing with every character pretty consistently. Unfortunately, it's not the easiest game to... Um, do properly all the time because of the way the AI works. Um, and again, it's all based on player input. So if I make a mistake, the game is going to punish me pretty severely. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed Streets of Rage. Thank you again for the people that selected the character. Plays well being the fastest. Um, like I said, she is a bit difficult to play because of her speed. But um, she's a lot of fun. Um, and all the other characters are pretty cool too. Adam is weird because of him being slow, he's actually faster in the air, so there would have been a lot of jumping in this run if that was the case. Anything? Just curious, what happened? Oh, just curious, what happens if you say yes to the final Uh so yeah, so the caveat to the story with my dad and me playing this game, when when we were playing the game together, um, when you're presented with that question, if you say yes, uh, and you're playing single player though, it will drop you back to stage six and you'll have to fight your way back up to the boss that's what happens you won't get the prompt again but you'll do you'll have to redo stage six seven and obviously the last stage all over again if you're in co-op however which is where i played it for the first time um if either player chooses one of the opposite directions then they fight to the death and then the person who wins uh, gets to continue the, the game. Um, so yeah, it's it was pretty pretty crazy to have me and my dad play this game. And then I choose no, he chooses yes, and then he just kills me. I'm like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Uh, but yeah, it was it's a fun game. Um, yeah, it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, enjoy the rest of uh scm and there's a lot of cool runs coming up we still have three full days jam-packed of runs so yeah like stay tuned um and i just for the record i don't commonly play games like this i do play crap games usually at least that's what most people consider me playing so but if you like good games this is one of the ones i'd recommend um i do want to learn streets of rage 2 at some point um, I think that would be really fun. Streets of Rage 2 is another really, really good one. I think Streets of Rage 2 is probably one of the best ones out of the series. Um, but it's a significantly longer run in general, but it's a lot more complex as well. So, thank you again. Um, that's it. That's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed and um, stay tuned.